What is up, YouTube? It is your boy, Never the Girl 11, back here with another P.O. to Pickle Rise video. And today, we have two dates for you guys, being the uh, Officer Carmen dates. Um, wait, let me make sure my mic's recording. Yeah, yeah, okay. Um, so, yeah, we're going to finish those dates off. It's uh, this one and this one right here. So, uh, real quick before we get started, if you have not already, make sure to smash the like button and subscribe if you're new so you never miss a video. But with all that being said, let's get right into the video. Whew. Taking a while to load up here. This morning you woke up in a holding cell at the local police station. You've been mistaken for an infinite, infamous criminal, one that looks exactly like you. The police have brought you back into the interrogation room to be questioned further. The door opens and in walks the female officer that arrested you. Good morning. Sleep well? Yes, thank you. I'm so glad to hear it. Her tone seems to imply otherwise. The officer Carmen takes a sip of coffee and sits across from you. We've given you time to thank Hall. Are you ready to help us now? The police keep insisting your name is Lucas Hall. I already told you my name is Kev, not Lucas. That's fine, Lucas. Kev, call yourself whatever you want. We have your mugshot and we have images of you at the scene of the crime. You don't have to take our deal. You'll be put behind bars either way. Of course, it'll be your full sentence and we'll track down the others anyway. What others? She makes an exasperated noise, rubbing her temples. So you're really not going to give them up then? If that's the case, I can just throw you back in your cell until it's time for the trial. I have better places to be, you know. <clears throat> A thought occurs to you. Wouldn't genetic evidence prove you're not the culprit? Try my fingerprints. I'm telling you, they won't match Hall's. Carmen goes to take a sip of her coffee, but it's empty. She pushes it to the side of the table. Your fingerprints, we already have them on file. We don't need to run them again. It's not free, you know. We can't just run tests for fun. Please? The officer squints at you, sizing you up. Fine. If it'll make you cooperate, we'll file your fingerprints again. She gestures at the white mirror on the wall. In a moment, another cop walks in. It takes you a moment to recognize him in his police gear, but it's Officer Young. Mason. Hey, Lucas, still in one piece? He hands his partner a large fingerprinting card, which she lays on the table. All right, hand them over, by which I mean your hands. He holds his own hand out towards you. Of course, good man. You let Officer Young take your hand. He rubs your fingers in a dark gray ink. Then he rolls your fingers one by one over the printing card laid out on the table. Perfect, thanks for your cooperation. Run those as quickly as possible, Mason. Hall is really starting to drag this out. I'm getting impatient. Yes, ma'am. Try not to bite his head off in the meantime. Giving a mock salute, he exits the room with your print. He told his likes you, bro. He seems nice for someone who stalked me down the street, I mean. He's an immature, aggravating, unprofessional man-child. But yes, he's actually a pretty decent person beneath all of that. He's a good partner, and before you ask, no, we're not dating. He's not even my type. What is your type? This is really not an appropriate conversation for us to be having. So let's drop it and get comfy. It might be a while before your prints come back. Which reminds me, why do you think you'd be safe just walking down the street? Less than two weeks after the robbery, too. You weren't even trying to hide. <laughs> I was just going to pick up some groceries. I didn't know I had to hide. Well, I hope that grocery trip was worth it. Last one you'll ever make. Something she says sticks in your mind. The robbery was recent. You've got a dumb look on your face. Spit it out. You said the robbery was less than two weeks ago, right? Again, with the playing stupid, fine, I'll humor you. You robbed the bank on the 7th, remember? We were on the scene in minutes, but you were already gone, slippery bastard. You were out of town from the 6th to the 9th, partying with your buddy Jake. That gives you an alibi for the date of the crime, but how can you prove it? Wait, that proves I'm innocent. I was busy. Suddenly, an upbeat musical jingle starts playing, cutting you off. Officer Ramos grimaces and pulls a mobile phone out of her pocket. She stops the music. I told her not to call me during the day. Anyway, what were you about to say? A confession? I was out of town on the 7th, and I can prove it. Carmen sits up straighter in her chair. Oh, this I gotta hear. Come on, then. What's this alibi? She left her phone on the table. You get an idea. I need to borrow your phone for a second to call someone. What? No, absolutely not. 
You do get one phone call within 24 hours of your arrest, but you use a secure line. Let me guess. You want to make one now? Yes, I need to call Jake. He can prove my innocence. I take it this Jake is a friend of yours? All right, I'll have a phone brought in for you. You only get one call, so make it count. Ten minutes later, you're dialing Jake's number on a police station line. He picks up. Hello, I don't recognize this number. It's me, Kev. Hey, Kev, how's it going, man? Not great. I've been arrested. Damn, I'm sorry to hear that. Wait, what? <laughs> the police grabbed you? For what? Doesn't matter. I need your help. Uh, sure. Shoot. Do you remember where I was on the 7th? Ha, did all the booze make you forget you were with me? Me and a couple, what, dozen ladies? I wondered if that one girl ever found her bra. Carmen taps her wrist pointedly. You don't have much time. You took pictures that night, didn't you? Bring them to the police station, please. Uh, are you sure? There's some incriminating stuff in there. But hey, if it'll help you out with whatever's going on, I'll do it. Give me 10. I'll drive on down. Thanks, man. I seriously owe you one. It's no biggie. I'm on my way. Man, that's, a real, that's a real nigga right there. Yeah, I need me a nigga like that, bro. Jake hangs up. You hang the phone back to a waiting officer who leaves with it. I don't know what you're planning, but it won't be enough. It's going to take a miracle to get you out of this one. On cue, Mason returns to the interrogation room. He's carrying a stack of paper and looks confused. Hey, so uh, you're going to want to see this, Carmen. He hands the papers to his partner and she reads them. Her face goes slack. Bad news? Shut up. Let me think. It's your fingerprints. They don't match the ones we have on file. Carmen drops the paper. She stands and begins to pace the room. Okay, so they don't match. That doesn't prove anything. There are lots of ways to change your fingerprints. Like surgery, maybe. I knew it. I'm telling you, I'm not Lucas Hall. Carmen, I'm starting to think he's not lying. Not you too. He has the same face for Pete's sake. That does still bother you. Obviously, you're not Lucas, but you look very similar. Long lost twin brother, maybe? They say that everyone has like seven identical looking people in the world. You're telling me I have a doppelganger who's a criminal? It's beginning to look like it, yeah. Ha, huh, sounds like a detective thriller movie. My criminal doppelganger, I can see it now. A real box office hit. Mason. Yeah, yeah, so what now? This isn't enough evidence to let you go just yet. It's a long story, actually. A knock at the door. Mason answers it and has a whispered conversation with someone you can't see. A moment later, Jake walks into the interrogation room. Who the hell is this? He can't be in here. Easy there. Guys at the front desk said we should hear him out. Jake, you actually came. Of course I did, man. I'm not going to let my bud Kev ride away in jail. I see you informed your friend about your false name. Dude, she looks really pissed at you. <laughs> That's because she is. Did you bring the pictures? Don't worry. I've got everything right here. Jake pulls out his smartphone and taps the screen a few times. Then he hands the device to Carmen. Why are you giving me this exactly? Kel said I was supposed to bring proof that he was with me on the 7th. And uh, that's what this is. Mason and Carmen exchange a look. Check the pictures out. You'll see I wasn't there on the 7th. I'll believe it when I see it. Let's take a look. The officers begin to swipe through the album of photos that Jake took. There's photos of some truly wild stuff. At various points, he went to embarrassment. Good God, how did he even get up there? Ha, huh, I like your beer can sunglasses, Kev. They're really, wait, that's not your face. You're wearing them on your, <laughs> bruh. Oh, wow. This goes on for what feels like ages. Finally, Carmen hands the phone back to Jake. The metadata checks out. These are all taken over a four-day period. So, Officer Ramos looks entirely defeated. You're you're not Lucas Hall, are you? I, I effing told you. I should tell her that. No, I'm not. I can't believe I was so... Hey, don't beat yourself up too much. He does look like him. Mason removes your cuffs. You rub your wrist to get the feeling back in your hands. Still, Kev, I can't believe to explain how sorry I am for how you were treated. Sp specifically, how I treated you. I genuinely thought you were this awful man. It's okay. I almost believed in myself for a minute there. Probably because I kept screaming it in your face. But, Mason, do you still have Hall's mugshot? Yeah, right here. He produces the photo in question. Amazing. You really do look just like him. It's true. Though looking again, you can notice a few small differences. The eyebrows are slight, slightly dissimilar and your nose is a subtly different shape. Wait, I have an idea. What is it? We have one other lead to go off of. The warehouse that Hall moves product through. 
We've been trying to think up ways to get inside without a huge operation. Starting a full-out war against Hall's people will draw more attention than we can afford. I think I see where you're going with this. We also have it on good authority Hall isn't in the warehouse right now. We saw him leave but lost track of him until we found him on a walk, or so we thought. She smiles apologetically at you. But Kev, you have Hall's face. You're almost an exact copy. We can get you inside the warehouse, masquerading as Lucas himself. And that'll give us more than enough info to track down the rest of his accomplices. Won't that be dangerous? I won't lie to you, Kev. It will be. But with your help, we can finally catch this guy and bring him to justice. We can't force you, of course. This is your decision to make. Jeez, heavy stuff. I'll do it. Let's take this guy down. You will? You will? <laughs> You're the man, Kev. Knew we could count on you. I'm just trying to get a date with the Carmen girl for the content, you know? You know, I never really believed you were the guy. Bull. Anyway, I can't thank you enough for your help. You're free to go, obviously. I can give you and your friend a ride home. Sounds good. Not for me, thanks. I don't want to leave my car here. Oh, of course. Mason, can you escort him out? Sure thing. Talk soon, Kev. You say your goodbyes to take to Jake and follow Karma to a cruiser. You've never been in the front of a police vehicle before. It must show on your face. It's a little different being in the front seat, isn't it? <laughs> There's more leg room. Haha, ha, I won't ask how many times you've been in the back. Carmen drives you back towards the street you were arrested on. You notice vehicles tend to move out of the way, so the trip goes quickly. That's convenient. One of the many perks of driving a police vehicle, I guess. I could put on my siren if we really wanted to go fast, but I probably shouldn't. The cruiser pulls up near the grocery store you were headed to that fateful morning. Here we are. Figured you'd want to finish that grocery shop. I probably should. Thanks for the ride. Don't mention it. Figured I probably owe you this much at least. Maybe once all is taken care of, I can buy you a drink. Nice. Smooth. Nice. She flashes a mischievous smile. We'll be in touch, Kev. Thanks again. You step out of the cruiser and shut the door. Carmen waves through the window and she, as she drives off. You wave back. You watch the vehicle turn the corner and like that, it's gone. I think I speak for both of us when I say, what the hell just happened? Arrested for a crime you didn't commit, interrogated, and now you're going to help the cops catch a criminal who looks just like you. Never a dull moment with you, is it, Kev? Guess not. Should I split this video into two parts or just go right into the next one? That's what we should do. Just go right into the next one. It's been a week since you proved your innocence at the police station. You're sitting in a cop car, hidden a block. Oh, I got hiccups from an old warehouse at the edge of town. Carmen is running you through the plan one last time before you go in. Okay, from the top, you're pretending to be Lucas Hall. Correct. This is the same warehouse Lucas uses to move sm smuggled product. Your job is to get inside by pretending to be him since you look alike. Once that's accomplished, you will then... Try to find information about where Hall's accomplices are. That's right. All you have to do is learn the whereabouts of Hall's accomplices. With any luck, they'll be inside. It saves us the trouble of hunting them down separately. Breaking cover could be very dangerous, so try not to raise any suspicion. If and only if you feel like they found you out, call us in. Simple enough. Realistically, you should have been trained for months before taking this on. A few weeks minimum, but we just don't have that kind of time. How's your hidden mic? We need to be sure it's recording every word. You check your shirt collar, where a tiny microphone has been hidden. It slipped a little from its original position. It's out of place. You're right. Here, let me fix that. She leans in close to adjust your mic, fixing it back in place. Her fingers brush the skin of your chest in the process. She leans back. It'll have to do. Don't forget, if you think you're in danger, call us. Carmen taps a tiny skin-colored device she hid inside your left ear earlier. The earpiece goes two ways. You'll be able to hear me so I can walk you through this. But I'll also be able to hear you. If you want us to move in, say snow. Got it. We'll run a quick test once you step inside just to make sure it's in working order. Mason will be in civilian clothes nearby with his team. Good luck. You step out of Carmen's cruiser and make your way to the warehouse. There's a small chirping sound and Carmen's voice emanates from your earpiece. Come in, Kev. Can you hear me? Loud and clear. Looks like we're in business. Time to put your acting skills to the test. Stay, stay safe. You start to head for the nearest door inside when a shout startles you. Hey, what are you doing here? Shrimp? Bruh, what kind of name? A massive tattooed man comes around the corner. He starts to walk towards you. 
Me, I just came to get an update. The man looms over you. You brace yourself to be flattened. Instead, he crushes you in a bear hug. You patiently wait for him to let go. Boss, I didn't think you were back yet. Oh, thank God. Well, here I am. Is everything in order? Here you are. And yes, sir, boss. Everything's all good here. All good, yep. Yeah, but you probably want to see for yourself, right? The big guy opens the door and turns back for you, smiling brightly. There's no way it's that easy. Stay on your toes. Follow him inside. The inside of the warehouse is deceptively large and unoccupied. Everywhere you look, there are stacks of unmarked crates, but no people. See everything where it should be, just like you asked. You said, Trimp, these all better be stacked by the time I get back. And here you are, and here they are, stacked, like you said. He grins, clearly proud of himself. Good work, Trimp. I'm very pleased. I knew you would be. I made sure to stack them extra neat, like you asked. The big guy puts his hand on his hips, staring proudly at the crates. So far, so good, Kev. How many others are inside? If you can, try to answer in a way that won't raise his suspicions. You've done very well, Shrimp, especially seeing as you're all by yourself in here. Thanks, boss. I tried to make you proud. If he's the only guard, then. You hear a muffled conversation on Carmen's end. Change of plans. We're going to move in once you get the intel. We can't lose this opportunity to seize Hal's warehouse. How's the rest of the guys? I haven't heard from them since they left. Is the money all stashed away at Fishy Fred's? Fishy Fred's? That fish and chips place by the underpass? We have what we need, Kev. Sending them to Calvary. Thank God. Sounds good. Sounds good. What do you mean, boss? Did they stash it? With a resounding slam, the side door is kicked open. A half dozen officers rush in, weapons trained on shrimp. Freeze, big guy. No sudden movements. Good work, Kev. We'll take it from here. The cops. Quick, boss. I'll hold them. Wait. Who's Kev? Shrimp looks from you to Mason and back. His face drops. Oh, boss is going to be so mad. This dude's like a big kid. Sorry, buddy. Shrimp is guided into the back of the cruiser, still muttering about his boss. You see Mason lead a team off into the city. The rest of the cops sweep the warehouse. One of them takes your earpiece. 30 minutes later, Carmen joins you outside. Hell of a job, Kev. Just got word back from Officer Young. They found the stolen money and get this. Two of the accomplices were in the area. Between them, the money, and that shrimp guy, we've got a lot to go on. We couldn't have done it without you. You're welcome. I'll admit, you really impressed me today. I can't believe our luck. Finding someone who not only looks like Hall, but is willing to help us take him down? You're a godsend. Oh, stop. You'll make me blush. Hey, credit where credit is due. Carmen shovels her feet distractedly. So, I know we kind of got off on the wrong foot. The worst foot, even, with, with me interrogating you and all. I remember. Technically, Hall is still at large, but we're closer to catching him than ever before. And I did technically promise to buy you a drink. So how about it? There's a bar by my place that's cheap but good. Not that it being cheap is important, but I'm bad at this. Help? <laughs> I'd love to. Awesome. Chief gave Mason and I the rest of the day off for season in the warehouse. What do you say? Let's go celebrate properly. You hop in Carmen's vehicle. In a few minutes, she pulls up next to an apartment block. One second. Just got to change out my uniform. Can't wear a badge to a bar. You wait in the cruiser while Carmen runs inside. When she returns, you hardly recognize her without her uniform. Uh, she does look different. All set. Let's go. You look great. Thank you, Charmer. So do you. You and Carmen drive down to the bar she mentioned and order a round of drinks. And then another round and another. By the time Mason joins up with the two of you, you're pretty far gone. Hey, how's my favorite secret agent doing? I see you started without me. It's not often I get to see Carmen loosen up. Join us, the more the merrier. Join us, join us, join us. Carmen slams the bar top with her fist and rhythm to her chant. How can I say no to that? Let me get a round of shots for all of us. You both cheer. The bartender prepares a shot for each of you. A toast to being one step closer to taking Hall down. And to the guy who helped us do it, to Kev. To us. You all down your shots. Mason splits off to greet a friend of his. The night continues. You're sitting next to Carmen at the bar when she sighs deeply. Wow, I genuinely can't remember the last time I let myself slow down. Catching Hall has been my only focus for so long now, but now we've made real progress. It's nice to relax. It's a good look for you, being relaxed. Carmen meets your eyes. She cracks a smile, chuckling to herself. You know what's funny? I thought it would be weird flirting with you. You know, because you look like Hall, but it isn't. She leans in close. Her hair brushes your hand gently. It doesn't feel weird at all. You could always cuff me. You kiss her. Oh, right. smooth. She leans into the kiss. When you finally break apart, her hand is on your thigh. Bars are fun, but 
You know what's more fun? My apartment. Just putting that out there. Carmen settles your tabs while you call a taxi back to her place. When you finally arrive, you can't keep your hands off each other. For you two, the night has only just begun. And what a night it is. For a cop, she really knows how to go wild. You've gotten up to a lot this past week, haven't you? Being arrested, proving your innocence, sneaking into a smuggler's warehouse. I don't think you'll be forgetting any of this for a long, long time. Oh, finally. Jeez, what a long, long video. Anyways, that's the end of this video. If you guys did enjoy it, make sure to smash the like button and subscribe if you're new so you never miss any other videos that I have. Uh, let me know what you thought in the comment section below. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.